what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel let's solve this math question that says find the value of x for which the square root of 4x minus 11 is equal to 2 minus x well our first step will be for us to get rid of this square root and we do that by taking the square of both sides so on the left hand side we have the square root of 4x minus 11 equal to on the right hand side we have 2 minus x so we take the square of both sides in order to get rid of this square root so we see that square cancels square root leaving behind 4x minus 11. This is equal to, on the right, we have 2 minus x all squared. Very good. Now, our next step will be for us to expand the right hand side. You notice that the right hand side is of the form a minus b all squared. And this is expanded as a squared minus 2ab and then plus b squared now if we have to compare what we have here to what we have here you see that a stands for 2 and b which is this b here stands for x so now let's expand this like this but i'm going to be writing the left hand side first so this is for x minus 11 that's the left hand side equal to the right hand side expanding in this form will be this is a squared that's 2 squared minus 2 times a times b that is 2 times a what is a here a is 2 times b b is x very good and then plus b squared so plus b squared that is x squared very good and now simplifying further we have the left hand side as 4x minus 11 to be equal to 2 squared is 4 minus 2 times 2 times x is 4x and then plus x squared so plus x squared very good now our next step will be for us to move what we have on the left hand side to the right hand side so i'm going to be moving this x squared first so when i move x squared to the left it becomes minus x squared when i move negative 4x to the left it becomes plus 4x and when i move 4 to the left it becomes minus 4. i've already got 4x on the left so plus 4x and I've also got negative 11 on the left so I'm going to put in negative 11 and this is equal to nothing remaining on the right that means this is equal to 0 and now simplifying we have negative x squared and now let's add up like terms 4x plus 4x is plus 8x and then negative 4 negative 11 gives negative 15 and this is equal to 0 very good now we need this coefficient of x squared to be positive and in order to achieve that we're going to be multiplying through each of the terms by negative 1 so negative 1 times negative x squared makes it positive x squared negative 1 times 8x is negative 8x and then negative 1 times negative 15 makes it positive 15 equal to negative 1 times 0 is 0 very good now you notice that we have a quadratic equation well we can decide to use whichever method we want to use to solve this quadratic equation you can decide to use factorization method because it can be factorized 
but I'm going to be using the completing the square. So the next step will be for us to move 15 to the right hand side so that we have x squared minus 8x remaining on the left to be equal to as 15 crosses to the right it becomes minus 15. Very good. Now using completing the square I'll take the coefficient of x which is negative 8 so I'll bring it out I'll divide it by 2 and I'll raise the result by the power of 2. So this will be negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And now remember that this is raised to the 2. Now I'm going to be adding this expression, which is negative 4 squared, to both sides of the equation. So we have on the left, on the left we have x squared minus 8x. I'm going to add this plus negative 4 squared equal to on the right I have negative 15 I'm still going to add this so plus negative 4 squared very good so notice that we have a perfect square on the left hand side just by adding negative 4 squared so a perfect square will look like this x minus 4 or squared very good and this is equal to, on the right hand side, we have negative 15. Now, negative 4 squared gives plus 16. Very good. Very good. Now, simplifying the right hand side, we have x minus 4, all squared, to be equal to. Now, negative 15 plus 16 will actually give 1. Very good. Now, in order to get rid of this square, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So on the left, I have x minus 4, all squared. I'm going to take the square root of the left-hand side. This is equal to, while taking the square root of the right-hand side, I'll be putting plus or minus, the square root of 1. Very good. Now, notice that this square root can cancel out the square, leaving behind x minus 4 to be equal to plus or minus. The square root of 1 is still 1. Very good. Now, to get the value of x, I'm going to be moving negative 4 to the right. And when I do that, it becomes positive 4. And on the right, I've got plus or minus 1. Very good. Now let's separate the two values of x. So x will be 4. Go with the plus first, so plus 1, which will result to 5. That's one solution for x. And now another solution for x that we've got is 4. This time go with the negative minus 1, and this will be equal to 3. Very good. Very good. Now let's check our solutions. So let's check. Check. Remember the two solutions we've got is the first value of x is 5. And the second value of x that we've got is 3. Now there is something you need to know from here. The left hand side, we have a positive square root. So that means... If the left-hand side is a positive square root, we expect the right-hand side to also be positive. That means 2 minus x must be bigger than or equal to 0. And if I have to move negative x to the right-hand side, this will be 2 will be bigger than or equal to x. Now, let me... Let me flip the positions. So x must be lesser than or equal to 2. Now look at these two solutions that we've got. The first solution we've got for x is 5. And this is actually bigger than 2. And we said x must be lesser than 2. So we're going to be rejecting this. 
Now, what about our second solution? Our second solution is also obviously bigger than two, but X is lesser than two. So we're going to be rejecting this as well. So none of these two solutions satisfy the equation. And whenever we solve and we've got solutions that do not satisfy the given equation, we call that extraneous roots. So we have extraneous root of x in which we solve for a solution for x, but these solutions are not valid. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.